I'm going to say something bold. I believe Joker may be the greatest film of our generation. And that's a pretty bold statement. Many people may say I'm wrong. I'm being hyperbolic. But let me just first say, in my opinion, and let me try to explain to you why I think this movie is, is so powerful and important. First, there's going to be spoilers in this. I think we're now well past the opening weekend. If you haven't seen the movie, hard spoilers, because I'm going to be talking about why I think this is one of the greatest films. But it's not just about the film itself. I want to talk about the politics, the culture, the, res- the, the response, the, 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 the gravitas. OK, now you've been warned about spoilers. But let me just say, for those that have seen the movie, the last, the, the, the ending joke, when, when that, that camera angle on his face, when he looks to the, the TV show host and he, and he says, what do you get when you cross? And then he says, you get what you effing deserve and pulls out that gun and bang. And that was like, I felt that in my whole body. Now, let me, let, let, now, now that I've said that and got that out of my system, let me, let me tell you why I think this is potentially the greatest film of our generation. I'm not trying to be hyperbolic. First, let me point out how much trash garbage, mo- garbage movies have come out in my life. Most of it's trash. I got to admit. Now, I'm 33. What I mean by generation is like in the past couple decades. Think about it. Like movies are all remakes and, and adaptations and explosions. And like you look at Avatar, right? It makes all this money. And what was it? Pocahontas in space. Okay, sorry. It's a fun movie, but whatever. Now, I, I, I'm open to you suggesting in the comments below movies you think that are better. But, but I want to make a point about our, our politics and our culture. I don't think this is the greatest film of our generation simply because it's a good movie. It is a good movie, by the way. I think it's because of what, what it's done to our society, the message it pushed, and, and it's, it's, an, it's an amazing story. So first, as I've mentioned before, the angles and the lighting absolutely perfect. The performance by Joaquin Phoenix was unsettling, in, it, well done, ridiculously well done. And celebrities have come out calling it a masterpiece. Take a look at this story from The Hollywood Reporter. Outstanding, irresponsible, Oscar voters react to Joker with many avoiding it. But Chris Rock, for one, said the Joker, incredible, wow, masterpiece, masterpiece. There's a lot of things in this film that I think need to be pointed out. For one, the Joker is not political. This individual is a nihilist, but his motivations are are not right or left. Like, I'm sorry, what what motivates him in the end is not a left or right thing. It's it's kind of both. He's mistreated, ignored. Sure, he's a white male. He's, He's insulted, berated. Life is unfair. He gets in trouble at work for something he didn't do. He gets blamed for something, essentially. But think about how he gets to the point where he's at. The hospital that was treating him gets shut down. He loses his therapist. So we have a, we have a mix. The people who support him are Antifa. There's a lot of, of, of cultural issues that came to light or that, that, were, that were given focus in this film without directly making it about that. That's why I think it was really well done. Many people are left arguing whether he was right wing, incel. I think it's all wrong. But other, people's, other people come out saying it was left wing. He's Antifa. Now I'll make my position clear. His supporters are clearly Antifa. They hold up, one guy hold up, holds up a sign, degre, you know, denigrating fascism. They, they dress like Antifa. They wear masks. They go and riot. They commit violence. And they're protesting wealth inequality. It's what sparks the whole thing. So they were able to capture this decade in this film. Here's what I should say, too. To, 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 uh, for, for you to think about in terms of whether or not this movie is the greatest, I'll, I'll first say greatest doesn't mean that it's the best. Greatest just means of like large magnitude, large impact. Okay. It it did a lot of things right. It did some things wrong. But I ask you this, with all of the press, the controversy, the the, the acclaim, this is a film people are going to remember for a long time. This is a film people are going to look back on and talk about. This is a film that will probably get reported, uh, recorded in the Library of Congress, like Back to the Future. I mean that. Avengers Endgame might for a different reason. But take a look at Endgame. What, what does it really have? I, I'll admit, I, I love the Marvel films, but Endgame was whatever. It was, it, was a, it was a finale mashup of all of these different, you know, we're doing a flashback episode, right? The Joker was something real. It wasn't reliant on action. It didn't, you know, rock you in your seat by exploding things. It was just a performance by a man and his experiences. And it's reminiscent of these great films that we've seen in the past that we don't see anymore, for the most part. These character-driven explorations. And it ends by tying perfectly into my, 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 the, the, the saddest, 
the ending was so satisfying, okay? How like, I've often wondered how he, how he has henchmen. Who would follow the Joker? He's nuts. And this was it. The system was rigged. The system was, was, in, fa- was, favor- was in favor of the rich. And that, that wealthy industrialist gets on TV and says, they're all clowns. And so you end up with these people who for left-wing motivations become anti-establishment and throw everything out the window and lift him up. And he paints his face in blood and dances. It was incredible. The way they made like this depiction of the Joker, when the cops on the train are like being beaten up by the, by the mob and he starts dancing and laughing, I'm like, oh, they nailed it. You're not supposed to think this guy's a hero. You're supposed to think he's a villain. That's the point. But let me read for you something that, that you know, it's from Michael Moore. And I want to read this to you. It's what he posted on Instagram that I think exemplifies why this is so important and why it is potentially a masterpiece. I, 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 know I, I say potentially because it's like it's, it's hard, but I definitely think so. I, I think this is, a, this is, I don't know, one of the best films I've ever seen, period. Check it out. Michael Moore wrote this. And you might not like Michael Moore, okay? But let me read what he said. On Wednesday night, I attended the New York Film Festival and witnessed a cinematic masterpiece. The film that last month won the top prize as the best film of the Venice International Film Festival. It's called Joker. And, we, and, and all we Americans have heard about this movie is that we should fear it and stay away from it. We've been told it's violent and sick and morally corrupt. We've been told that police will be at every screening this weekend in case of trouble. Our country is in deep despair, our constitution is in shreds, and a rogue maniac from Queens has access to nuclear launch codes. But for some reason, it's a movie we should be afraid of. Oh, I disagree with his, his assessment on Trump. Fine. I agree with the, the general sentiment. With everything going on in the world, they're saying, don't see this movie. How dare they? It's so irresponsible. No, it's a remarkably well done movie. But look, he says, I would suggest the opposite. The greater danger to society may be if you don't go see the movie. Because the story it tells and the issues it raises are so profound, so necessary, that if you look away from the genius of this work of art, you will miss the gift of the mirror it is offering us. Yes, there's a disturbed clown in that mirror, but he's not alone. We're standing right there beside him. Joker is no comic book movie. The film is set somewhere in the 1970s Gotham, New York City, the headquarters of all evil, the rich who rule us, the banks and corporations whom we serve, the media, which feeds us a daily diet of news they think we should absorb. But this movie is not about Trump. It's about the, the America that gave us Trump. Yeah, I agree. The America which feels no need to help the outcast, the destitute. The America where the filthy rich just get richer and filthier. Thank you, Joaquin Phoenix, Todd Phillips, Warner Brothers, and all who made this important movie for this important time. I love this film's multiple homages to Taxi Driver Network, The French Connection, Dog Day Afternoon. How long has it been since we've seen a movie aspire to the level of Stanley Kubrick? Go see this film. Take your teens. Take your resolve. Bravo, Michael Moore. I don't completely agree with everything he said, but I will stress there are some, some points he made I do completely agree with. This movie, Joker, you see a man. He gets taken off his meds. He's angry. He's, he's belittled. The world is unfair. And there's a system in place to help the corrupt. That's just the way it is. When Thomas Wayne goes on TV and says they're all clowns, it's the, it, it could have been Hillary Clinton saying the deplorables. It could have been Mitt Romney talking about the people who aren't paying their taxes. It is the elites. And in the end, you see those who are pushed around by the elites pushing back, be it left or right. The Joker is a nihilist. He's not here for a political reason. To him, it was just funny. And in reality, when he was being mobbed in that train, it was self-defense. But later on, on that talk show, he says, I did it because it was funny, because they're awful. You're all awful. And he says, so are you. You're awful, Murray. It wasn't about whether they had money. It was about the fact that there is a system that benefits connections and the corrupt And this is a guy who, for every reason, was angry, laughing, celebrating. In the end, he didn't care. He didn't care about the system. He cared about destroying the system. There was no political message behind what he was doing. He was just angry. He was tired. He, and and that was it. You know what Michael Moore brings up is that, while while I do think he's highlighting the more left-wing message of it, which again, proves my point that the message was more so left-wing than anything, that you have these elites and it's the very, you know, you know, anti-1%. I think what we end up seeing is, well, you know what, Let, let's, I, I'll, I'll keep this one short and I'll wrap it up by saying the system in place made everybody angry and it gave us Donald Trump for better or for worse. You know, the economy is improving. The system in place led to people saying, I've had enough of the establishment, be it the Democrats or the Republicans. 
And along came Trump and Bernie. And people voted for it. And a lot of people voted for Trump for this reason. Because it was, it was going to rock the system to its core. Bernie or bust. The people who voted for Trump simply to watch it all burn down. I tell you this. I know a, a few anarchists, far leftists, who voted for Trump. They didn't vote for Trump because they like him. They voted for him because they thought he was the end. That he was the harbinger of the, cr- the collapse of the system. And there are a lot of people who supported him because they thought he was the outsider coming to shake things up. But in the end, you see this film Joker. And you'll see why these people support a nihilist who doesn't care. The system has been corrupt for so long, they've turned against it. And they've turned to a madman who, for no reason, just says, you're awful. I mean, I mean for, for no reason, he kills the people. And, and the reason is that he, he views them as awful, rather subjective. But that's the, that's the point. He was taking a stab at the system, at the elites. So yeah, I think Michael Moore's right in that this film shows us a depiction of the chaotic world that leads people to say, I've had enough, whether you're on the left or the right. So anyway, look, what I want to tr- say about this film being the greatest film of, our, film of our generation is, for one, it's being heralded as, a ma- heralded as a masterpiece. Whatever you think about the film, whether you liked it or hated it, because a lot of people don't like it, that's fine. It's going to be remembered. It's going to be recorded. It's going to be referenced. That's, that's what matters. And the funny thing about it is, it's a comic book adaptation. I was critical of adaptations in the beginning. You may have noticed that. I'm sure some people have already commented saying, but Tim, it is an adaptation. That's fine. I understand that. But it was incredible. It was an interpretation. It was, it was that, it was that uh, background we hadn't seen before. And I thought it was, man, I, I thought they hit the nail on the head. I, a truly incredible film. If you haven't seen it, I've spoiled the movie for you in a lot of ways, but go see it. Go see it again, because I'm, I'm going I'm to see it again this weekend, probably. That's how good it was. I often say, well, I see it again. Eh, probably not, right? To a lot of movies. This one, definitely. And I know people who saw it back to back. It's, it's, it's not, I don't know, it's, it's, it's really well done. T- Todd Phillips, Wow. Seriously, I'll leave it there. I just, you know, listen, I got, I, I know, I know I've made several videos about this right now, but I really do think it's that good. That, that, and, and that's a lot for me to say, right? I got, I believe I have one more segment coming up for you in a few minutes. Stick around and I will see you shortly.